Hello and welcome to this seventh video in a series where in JavaScript using the P5 library we're making like a snooker or billiards I don't know what billiards is or pool simulator slash game um, and in this video I'm going to show you how to do this queue mechanic um, what's the time? let me do a time check okay because I want to keep this 15 minutes. I think I say that in every video and it goes longer than that. So, the way it works, the queue mechanic, is you can hopefully tap the screen. I haven't tried it on a tap uh, touch device yet, but you, if you're using a mouse or a, 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 what do you call it, a touchpad, you put your finger down and then you can make contact with the cue ball and only the cue ball. If you manage to, to pocket the cue ball, then you can, you can use the mouse. Um, to hit any ball you like. There we go, like this. You know doing that thing that everyone does after you finish pool? You smash it around, so I wanted to replicate that. Anyway, what we're talking about is this is this uh, queue mechanic. Um, and again it's using vectors, so if you uh, if you want to learn how to make the balls move around using vectors, look at the previous video and I'll, I'll put a link in the description. But this this is just about this video, the the queue mechanic here. So, how does it work? What's going on? Well, basically, the queue is always pointing towards the queue ball. So, all that's left down to the user is you know deciding what angle um, uh, to leave the queue at, and then you have to press your your finger down, and then you can you can strike the ball. So, how do we get that working? Right. Let's have a look at some code. Um, where are we? We are in, uh, or should be in, yes we are, the the queue class. So, um, I'm writing this in an object orientated way and I'm trying to use, although I'm not very familiar with it yet, the ES6 um, syntax um, for JavaScript. So, uh, this involves using classes and inheritance. So basically, um, we don't need to explain that, but if you are interested in object oriented programming, ES6, I'll put a link to the first video which goes through that very slowly. So, I've already got an, uh, a class um, called Edge, and that gives me a basic position, and maybe, I think that's about it, and Q is um, inherited from it. Um, and basically, we've got a position for our Q, which kind of follows the mouse, um, we're going to have a tip position, so we know where the very end of the queue is, where it makes contact. Um, oh look, I've written some notes for me. So when I was first coding this, I wrote some notes uh, to clarify what I wanted to do. So we want the queue to always point towards the queue ball, and we need to draw a vector from the mouse position to the queue ball, and then draw a queue according to that vector. So this is how this works. So in this object, um, we've got, what is this uh, method? What is this method? Well, that's strange. Oh no, update, sorry. We're in the update method. So every time we, we draw the queue in our draw loop, in our game loop, we call this method update. Ah, that's right. And so it just makes sure that the position of the kind of control for the queue is, is um, positioned on the mouse. Then we get uh, we make a vector for the Q-tip and are ready to um, to find where that tip is. Right. So what do we do? What do we do? Um, we're basically making three vectors straight away, and I'll just explain what those are. We've got to the center of the cue ball, so that's the like a heading, a direction we want to find, so we know which way to point. And then we've got where my ball is. So where the cue ball is. So this vector isn't to do with direction, it's just holding a position. It's going to hold an x in this component and a y in that component. And then where the position is, again that means where the mouse is, x and y. Um, which I'm going to use in a calculation. Uh, so I'm talking about this one. Right. Before we get into this, and it's not very long, this um, this algorithm. Let me try and diagram it. So, is this working yet? No, I need I need thicker lines, and I need them to be pink. 
There we go, right. So this this will be our cue ball. There we go. Ah. And then we've got a cue over here, let's say. We've got the cue over here. Well, this is what we want to happen. And we want to draw a line. Can I make this a different colour now? We want a line from the cue <laughs> the cue ball centre to our mouse position. Let's say this big X is a mouse position. So we want to get a vector, a direction. So what we need to do first is find the position of the cue ball. <laughs> this diagram, what am I doing? Oh my god. <laughs> and then we want to find the position of the mouse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then subtract <laughs> the um the <laughs> The, the ball position from the mouse position, which gives us a heading oh, that we just create, we just draw a line on. That was the most ridiculous thing that's ever happened anywhere. Um, I'm just going to record to the end. I'm not even going to abandon this video. Right. So that's clarified everything for you. Um, let's go through the code and see if it makes any more sense. So first, where my ball is, all I'm doing here is putting some numbers into the vector. So the ball and ball zero is our cue ball. So that's what that means. So ball zero's x is in the x component of where my ball is. Y component's done. Where the p is, where the position is, I think I meant there. So that's the that's the um, mouse position. Ah, now how do we get the heading which I tried to draw here. How do we go from the ball to where the mouse is? How do we do that? Shall I attempt one more? One more line. And then I'll quit. Yeah. Oh, wow. That kind of worked. That line there, that heading, and now I need like a little arrow on it. Oh, yes. It worked. We want this direction. So we know, So then we can just draw uh, another line. And then we can just draw a line over the top of it, and that will be our cue. That's basically what we want to do. So to get that directional line, that direction, that vector, we have to substitute the ball position from the mouse position. So we've got where my ball is, my, um, that's been substituted from where the mouse position is, where the, where the cue is being held. So how are we doing that? I'm using the P5 vector object function sub and I went over that in the last video so if you if you minus one position from another one then you get a heading towards it you, you get this line it should be going in the other direction <laughs> I've now realized <laughs> I knew things were going too well there we go so um, <laughs> that's more like my old di diagram okay so if you substitute one position from another position, you go towards the thing you are substituting out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. Um, so I'm storing that direction in 2CB, standing standing for towards the cue ball. Uh, next, we normalize it. That just means if there's any magnitude so the, the length of the vector, the distance between that position and the other position, we're not interested in. All we want is the direction itself, the pure direction. Then I'm making another vector, which is just a copy of to the cue ball, because I want to do something to the original vector, and then I want to use that original value again. Now, if I've done something to it in between there, I won't be able to access the original value. That will become clear. So, um, what we want to do is draw a line. Now, in P5, to draw a line, use the, the line function, and then you give it two points, an X and a Y for one point, and then an X and a Y for another, and it draws a line between it. As simple as that. I don't. Should I try and diagram? So we've got a point over here, and then another point over here, and P5 draws a line between it. That's it. So it's like this one is L1, and then this one over here is L2. There you go. And 
we're kind of saying, what we want to kind of say is, if I'm holding the the mouse kind of here and the cue ball's over there, um, we've got our heading already in, what did I call that, 2CB, so I've got a vector, 2CB, <laughs> Should stop drawing those vector liney things. So I've got a vector. Oh, Control Z. Sorry, Command Z. Command Z. So two CB is this arrow, is this vector, and L one is going to be the tip, and we want to put L two in the back somehow. So we're drawing a line from L one to L two. So we need to find the Q tip and the the back of the Q. So I'm saying let L1, first of all, be where the mouse is. And then I'm going to add um, to L1, so it's where the mouse is at the moment, a multiple, or, or the multiplied um, direction that's held, that's going towards the, the cue ball. And I'm multiplying it by 100. So at the moment, 2CB is just a, a unit vector, it's just a pure direction, and I just want it 100 in that direction. So if you use add, you go a lot, you slide along this direction. So here we are with the, with the mouse position, and with add, you slide towards the cue ball. So L1 is 100 units, 100 pixels or whatever, this way. So to get to L2, we're going to subtract the amount that we want this way. So let's have a look at that. L2 equals create vector from where the mouse is, x and y, and then we subtract, so we slide back down the vector um, by 280, because I wanted the back of the queue a bit longer. So you might think, well, why didn't you just use towards CB and just multiply back, back along it? don't we just need CB? We ju if we've got this direct vector, don't we just go in a negative direction, substitute from it? Well, let me show you what happens, because this is a bug that you might, you might get yourself. So if I go 2CB, how long have I been? Not too long. 2CB, command save, and run this again. Um, you might notice something about the the length of the queue. <laughs> it's really, really big. Maybe this is your kind of thing. Maybe you, you need a big queue. But if it's not, and that's not what you intended, we need to debug and see what's gone on. So what I was expecting is that I just slide up this way by 280. I'm just... If I use sub instead of add, I should just go in the opposite direction up my vector. So I'm definitely going the right direction. So that's not going wrong, but it's going a lot longer than expected. In fact, it's going about 28,000, something like this, because after I've multiplied 2CB, I'm not just multiplying a value. I'm actually multiplying kind of like the, the vector object itself. So I've already multiplied it by 100. Now I'm multiplying that value, that vector by 280 again. So all this back CD, so back from the, the cue ball, that just stores the original value of the direction without the magnitude. I guess I could, what we could do is just normalize CB again, 2CB again. Um, I don't know which is quicker. I, it doesn't really matter in this simple simulation. So Hopefully we can just put back CD in, <laughs> CB, and hopefully everything will be back to, to normal now. Yes, there we go. So we've got our Q length. Lovely. Um, and that's basically how it works. Um, I could just show you very quickly um, in our main JavaScript file how, the, how I'm doing the input. There we go. Right. So P5 has got loads of very easy input, um, like event functions, um, such as mouse, mouse dragged. So I haven't come up with that name. That is that is inbuilt to P5. So if you write function mouse dragged, this function will be called at a mouse drag um, event, 
Or I believe if you're on a touch screen and you drag your finger across, this will similarly be, be called. Um, touch started, again, that's kind of, it works kind of like backward compatible with the mouse. And touch ended as well. Um, what am I doing there? So I've got a, a global Boolean um, variable called QActive. So basically, if you're you're pressing the button down, pressing your finger down, um, it'll send uh, it'll set QActive to true. Only when you've like let go of the screen or let go of the button is it set to false. So any point if you're touching the screen or tr you know trying to do something, then uh, then it goes to true. So I believe in our loop, uh, game loop. Sorry, did I just go past it? Set up balls, touch ended. I'm um, looking for the draw loop. Here it is. Um, hopefully, I can just spot where I'm doing it. Is it near the top? Can you see it and can I not? Oh, there we go. This must be it. Um, so I'm saying, ah, if cue ball, sorry, if <laughs> cue active. That just means if that's true, if the queue is active and this other stuff, then the queue check strike. Okay, so I'm only um, calling this function of the queue object if the queue is active, and that's controlled as I've just shown you through the through the input. And there it is. <laughs> there it is. There's a declaration of that variable. Uh, queue active equals false. So we're waiting for the user to to get involved before we start. Right, um, I think that's all we're gonna all I'm gonna show you in this one. Um, let me know if you have any other questions or anything. This might be the last the, la the last snooker video that we've done, snooker script. Thank you very much for watching. I hope some of that was helpful. I apologise for the diagrams, although I enjoyed myself making those diagrams. Good evening.